Hey guys, so we're back and got my hands on some AO light therapy glasses. We are gonna put these through a bunch of testing and we plan on testing all of the other light therapy glasses on the market and so we can see how they all compare and which one's best. Uh, in this video, we're gonna just be looking at the AO glasses. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox them and then we're gonna talk about them. Okay, so we're gonna see what we get in the box. We get the hard carrying case, some rubber feet on the bottom. Pop this open. So they just kind of fit in just like that. It's kind of nice for travel. Here's the glasses. And then of course you get the USB-C and the soft pouch. USB-C cable. And then a quick start guide. So here they are. The first thing I noticed about the AO glasses is just how light they are. Um, I weighed them in at about 32 grams and I have a pair of blue blockers that weigh 28 grams and that's just like plastic glasses. So these are just like astoundingly light. There's not a lot of side pressure. I've worn them for an hour straight, which would be three total sessions and I didn't notice any discomfort, which I was expecting. I mean, I was expecting it to be uncomfortable and it wasn't. These are about like half the weight of all the other ones. So to use them, Super simple, you just open them up. When you open the hinge, the lights start to turn on. There is a slow start over like eight seconds, which is actually pretty nice. It doesn't just turn straight on. It's a very subtle warm up. Put them on, there's an adjustable nose piece. You kind of want to get it, so you don't want it blocking your vision like this. Obviously, that's quite annoying because then you have to walk around, you know, with your head tilted up. So you kind of want it just a little bit above your vision. And that's it. A session is 20 minutes long. You're gonna get nine and a half sessions based on my uh, calculations per charge. A charge is 90 minutes. And when you get down to the end of the lifespan, you're gonna see it blink three times. So it'll let you know. Charging is done via USB-C, which is nice because some of the other ones on the market are micro USB and I am sick of micro USB. And I'm sure you are too. It's pretty nice. It's nice and dispersed. As you can see, there's a frosted visor that the light reflects off of. It doesn't have a lot of glare to it. I will say if you're in a very, very dark environment, they are quite bright. You'll want a little bit of light on. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to see stuff. The old AO were Bluetooth. These ones aren't. They're new ones. This is all there is to it. There aren't any brightness settings. There aren't any session variation times. You just put them on 20 minutes. If you need more than that, just open and close them. It's dead simple to use. You could buy these for your grandma. They do work with glasses. Um, they just sort of sit right on top. I mean, you are gonna diminish the benefits a little bit. If you can get away with not wearing glasses, I would advise that. Now, AO does have an option to subscribe to their app. The app has just been completely revamped, so it's still a little bit bare bones at the time of this video. I've spoken with Alex over at AO, and currently they're hoping to ship Apple Health and Google Fit integration, which is basically gonna take your sleep data, if you have that, and it's going to recommend all kinds of circadian habits, such as wind down times, when you should use these, and how often you should use them, depending on whether or not you're jet lag, or if you stayed out too late at night, which is really cool, actually. We need more apps like that on the market. I think circadian health is extremely overlooked, now the meat and potatoes. We did test these using Henry. This is Henry. We stuffed a spectrometer in a foam mannequin head. And this way we'll be able to scientifically compare you know, with and without glasses, how high up on the nose, what sort of dose are you going to get? Yeah, it's, it's kind of the most objective that we can be with these. So the AO glasses give off a narrow band, sort of blue turquoise light around 470 nanometers. This sort of gives AO an advantage over something like the Luminet, which granted I haven't tested yet, but they use a white light, which means they're probably going to have to increase the lux in order to get sort of the same amount of melanopic potential. This is about smack dab right in the middle of the melanopic bell curve, meaning better bang for your buck, essentially. It doesn't have to be as bright to get sort of the same activation of the retinal ganglion cells. For example, I've got a pair of retimers here. These put out actually right around the same amount of energy that the AO puts out, but they're about five times as bright at their max, which is significant, but they're about just as effective. 30 minutes of using the AO glasses is going to give you a circadian stimulus of 0.425 to 0.576, which is well above the 0.3 threshold that they recommend. 
the melanopic EDI that I measured was 326 to 862, which is well above the 250 melanopic EDI lux threshold that the well standard recommends. So by all measurements, these are good, they'll work. Now, as far as studies that have been done using the AO glasses, there aren't many. AO is currently working with over, I believe, 10 institutions, and there's only really one published study that I know of. This was done in collaboration with the Naval Submarine Medical Research Laboratory. So basically what they did is they used the AO for 40 minutes in the morning, and they used blue blocking glasses for two hours at night. Just about everyone in the study experienced an increase in wakefulness, energy in the morning, as well as better mood. Some of the complaints were simply that it was difficult to see in dimly lit environments. Now that's, that's pretty much all we have to work with as far as AO studies go, but we can sort of use proxy studies. So the team behind Retimer has done a few studies where they looked at multiple different wavelengths and how they affected melatonin suppression. One study we can look at included 18 participants who were shown around 130 microwatts of blue light around 470 nanometers, very similar to the AO. Now in this study, dim light melatonin onset, in other words, the point at which you start to produce more melatonin at night, was shifted by about two and a half hours. So again, proof that this kind of thing can work. Now the other proxy study worth looking at looks at multiple wavelengths, one of which was 470 nanometers of light. If we look at the mean melatonin percentage suppression for 470 nanometer light, we'll see that we got about a 60% melatonin suppression rate, which is fantastic. So what are my final thoughts? They're great. I mean, they're so light, it's really incredible how comfortable they are. Uh, they don't get in your way. I'm gonna be doing a review of the retimers. These things are real weird. I prefer these, right? I'll just say that. These are better. We also have a written review and we've got all kinds of pictures and statistics, links to studies in the description below. So if you wanna check that out, read about this a little bit more. So yeah, thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next one.